My son, you are having nightmares. From the past, hardships will follow, along with betrayal. But during your trial, you will grow stronger. You will fight for those you love. And when all seems lost, the sleeping dragon within you will awaken. Dragon King Chronicles, a new Isekai. Sleeping Dragon King Chronicles by Kenneth Flanders Jr. Narrated by Peter Widener. Copyright 2020, Kenneth Flanders Jr. All rights reserved. Chapter Zero, Future's Past. It's time. Are you ready? The young Nikomata asked, her ears twitching beneath her hooded cloak. She was speaking to a young man who was sitting near the edge of a cliff gazing out across the distance. For a moment, he didn't show any sign of acknowledgement. Perhaps he was pulled into the beauty of the sunset, the crimson and gold colors that only heaven can provide prior to dusk. In actuality, the young man, though his body was still and calm, struggled with racing thoughts. His heart was brimming with the vibrancy of raw emotion. His feelings were like a torrent his eyes filled with dangerous energy and hardened resolve. Thoughts of blood, tears, and anguish bubbled up within his heart and burst forth painting vivid memories of those he'd lost along the way. You're a lot like me. You hold in a great deal because you've never felt safe enough to be yourself. It's... it's okay. Just let it out. The young man clenched his fist as tears began to wet his cheeks, a soft breeze cooling his face in the process. You always cry, and that's okay. But just for once, really make an effort. I know you can do it, because I used to be just like you. The young man got to his feet, wiping a solitary tear from his cheek as he pulled the hood of his cloak down across his shoulders. Yeah, let's go. Chapter 1. Waking Sleep Ryuga! The voice of a woman could be heard screaming, her voice piercing the darkness, though her face was shrouded by darkness. Ryuga could easily discern her identity. It was a person he could never forget, one his mind drifted to with every still moment of the day. Mother! Mother! The young boy reached out, his hands outstretched as the jaws of a large, ominous creature closed in. It was the same dream, lingering memories that often played out in his psyche. He'd had enough, or rather his heart did. I... I hate dreaming, he whispered to himself as he sat up in his bed. There he remained motionless for quite some time as he attempted to quiet the stirring emotions now mingling within his heart. Anger, sadness, regret. These feelings piled themselves on until he could do little else but get his day started, as he always did. Breakfast first, always breakfast, then a shower and rush to get dressed. Even with a leisurely pace, he always had some extra time to linger about. So much like any other school day, the boy known as Ryuga decided to switch on his television to watch the news. He took his place at the kitchen table, as he often did, and pulled out a crossword puzzle, one of many he often kept stashed in his coat pocket. He could hear his classmate, Gates, in the back of his mind. Old man, the customary remark each time Ryuga pulled a crossword out in front of his fellow students. This made him smile a bit, just for a moment. Soon he was on his way. He double-checked before setting out. Backpack, uniform complete, a packed lunch. As he walked to his front door, he paused for a moment, turning to face a picture on the nearby counter. Ryuga bowed his head, offering up a prayer for the dark-haired, bright-eyed woman who was smiling so carefree in the photograph. She was the focal point of the picture, although there was another person with their arm draped over her shoulder. His face was ripped away by the edge. Just the thought of that 
bastard made Ryuga's blood boil. But his anger only lasted for a brief moment as his thoughts turned to his mother once more. Bye, Mom, Ryuga said in a solemn, sad expression on his face as he swung his overcoat over his shoulder and exited his home. Within minutes, Ryuga was on his way, as were most of the teens in his area. The school wasn't very far, so he and the others from his neighborhood walked to their destination. Along the way, he saw the usual suspects. Linda, a blonde-haired, foreign exchange student who was well-liked by her classmates. As usual, she had a large group of girls surrounding her. Ryuga called these the Hive, with Linda as the queen bee at the center. Next was Ichigo, a tall, skinny boy who wore glasses, and his good friend Gates, a short, warm-hearted, and friendly teen. Gates, whose real name was Ryuji, had been Ichigo's friend since Ryuga could remember. But the two shared such a similar name, Ryuga and Ryuji. Everyone in the class called Ryuji by his last name. And then there was Tarad. Tarad was your typical jock, big on brawn, but small on intellect. Like most days, Ryuga just pulled his headset over his ears and continued on his way, ignoring everyone and everything on his way to school. In virtually no time, Ryuga and the others were entering the large gates of their school, Garden Haven Academy. Though the school was considered normal by all standards, it had a reputation for creating students who would go on to excel in life. As such, it had many amenities that other schools would be hard-pressed to obtain. As the students settled into 3A, the homeroom class for Ryuga and his classmates, Ryuga immediately took note of two extra desks in the back row. Hmm, he thought to himself just seconds before the teacher entered the room, in tow with two new additions to the classroom. Attention class, Miss Konami began. Today we have not one, but two new transfer students. 3A is really growing, hmm? Miss Konami was a young lady in her early 20s. Her heart-shaped face was framed by circular spectacles and a jovial smile most times. Her short, bowl-cut hair made her head resemble something of an acorn, which is why many of the students in the class called her Acorn Queen behind her back. Ryuga, however, had no problem with Miss Konami, as she had always been kind to him, perhaps a bit too kind for his liking at times. First up is Akira. Akira, please introduce yourself, Miss Konami added. Of the two students, the young girl known as Akira stepped forward. Her skin was fair, her hair jet black and shiny. In fact, it was the first thing Ryuga noticed about her. Next were her sky-blue eyes. They had a peculiar look to them. It was as if he was staring into a kaleidoscope of colors. Immediately, he was drawn into them. Then, their gazes met. It was like a jolt of energy tingling from within. Ryuga became lost for just an instant. He was completely disarmed in that moment as Akira smiled gently, forcing Ryuga to blush. He quickly bowed his head in an attempt to avert his gaze. Just then, the impact of a kick to the side of his desk jolted Ryuga back into reality. Huh. Don't get carried away, loser. A girl like that would never be interested in you. It was Jin, one of Tarad's jock buddies. He was one of the people who formed what Ryuga liked to call the jockstrap squad. They ate together, harassed and bullied people together, probably even took shits together. This thought caused a creepy smile to spread across Ryuga's face, which in turn won another insult from confused Jin. Creep! Ugh. While daydreaming, Ryuga had managed to completely miss Akira's introduction. Next up was the other transfer student. His name was David Jones, a short, chubby kid from America. His face was boyish, which by extension made him seem much younger than he really was. The fact that he had freckles also didn't help. Well, one out of two isn't bad. One beauty, one more nerd, Jin whispered to his nearby associates. The two students took their place in the back row of the classroom before Miss Konami continued. Linda, I'd like you to show our two newest additions around for the remainder of the day and help them out. As a class representative, it falls upon you. Got it, Miss Konami, Linda said with a beaming smile. How fake, Ryuga thought to himself. She's always like this, two-faced. The day's lesson was much like any other. Ryuga often spent his time staring out of the window, and today was no exception. However, he couldn't help but find his mind drawn to the new student Akira. 
Occasionally, he would turn to sneak a peek at her. More often than not, Jin's smug face would be there attempting to cock block, but every now and then, Akira would also be staring in his direction. Each time she would smile, forcing Ryuga to blush as well. Ryuga wasn't really the romantic type. More often than not, he would prefer to choose a vantage point to observe others, rather than get involved in class politics. But things were better, simpler that way. After observing the flow of the classroom, there were basically three groups of people with any measure of influence. The jocks, the queens, and the used. Ryuga fell into group number three. The jocks and queens were pretty self-explanatory, but the used? Well, that was a bit different. Essentially, as long as you could provide some service or function to either group, you'd be left alone to a certain degree. Or rather, your experience would be more pleasant. Because Ryuga was positioned next to Jin, and Jin was as dumb as a box of rocks, it put Ryuga in a position to be useful. By allowing Jin to take his homework, Ryuga actually made copies and pretended that Jin was pulling one over on him to inflate Jin's ego. Jin could obtain passing grades. Because Jin could pass tests without studying, Ryuga was able to navigate his school life without much trouble, which was exactly how he liked it. These three social groups were sort of like an unspoken hierarchy. Everyone else was just considered normies. And while Ryuga had the mental acuity to navigate this social hierarchy, he simply refrained from doing so. There were many times where he'd been approached after having been deemed cool enough, but there was just something that didn't sit right with Ryuga. They just, all of them, seemed so basic. Perhaps it was due to the level of maturity. Ryuga simply couldn't bring himself to care about the things other students his age were worried over. Perhaps it was due to the fact that their home lives were very different. Everyone else had mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. Ryuga had empty halls and bedrooms, memories that haunted him in the night, regrets, and only pictures to see him off in the morning. His thoughts were wandering into a territory he didn't want to venture, so he decided to change his line of thought. I wonder what group Akira will fall into, he whispered to himself as he gazed out of the window to his left. He wasn't looking at anything in particular. Perhaps he was wishing the sky would open and take him away. Maybe he was seeking some answer for the circumstances of his life. Maybe he just wanted to be as light and weightless as a cloud. Soon it was lunchtime and Ryugo would have to answer as to his earlier ponderance. Um, hello. Ryugo was staring out of the window when a female voice pulled him from his thoughts. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, oh, hello. Ryugo was surprised to see that Akira was standing next to his desk, a pleasant smile on her face. I noticed you're staring out of the window quite often. Is there something interesting out there? Akira said as she leaned over his desk and peered out of the window. Hmm? Huh? No. Ryuga said as his face grew flushed slightly. A sweet-smelling scent wafted over, and though he couldn't place it, Ryuga recognized it as floral. Oh, okay, well, I just wanted to say hello. I'm Akira, as you know. Akira said as she took a couple of steps back to correct her balance. Ryuga. Oh. I like that name, Akira said as their eyes met once more. Ryuga couldn't put his finger on it, but it was as if her gaze was slowly pulling him in. Akira! Linda's voice pierced the air, completely interrupting the mood. Let's go have lunch, she said, grabbing Akira by the arm and dragging her away before she could even respond. Uh, okay, Akira said as she turned to wave to Ryuga. Don't even think about it, loser. Tarad's deep voice growled as he stepped in front of Ryuga. Their eyes met as Ryuga gazed upwards. Something about their eye contact seemed to agitate Tarad. Perhaps it was due to the fact that he could tell Ryuga didn't genuinely care one way or the other about his intimidation tactics. Freak! You and your creepy eyes! Tarad said as he folded his arms and turned around to walk out of the classroom with his usual bunch. <laughs> Ryuga grunted to himself. Truthfully, the last thing on his mind was Tarot, or Linda. Even Akira wasn't enough to fully distract his mind, or his heart. Four days, Ryuga muttered to himself as sadness washed over him while he continued to gaze. Chapter 
Chapter 2. Get in where you fit in. As expected, David was rebuffed as he attempted to get Linda to show him around. Not enough coolness points, I suppose. Ryuga thought to himself as he watched the spectacle. In general, the queens were surrounded by the jocks who acted as a sort of hovering royal guard. Any male who didn't meet the requirements for coolness, as labeled by either group, would be intimidated and possibly beaten into retreat. Somehow, Akira had made her way squarely into the middle of the hornet's nest. In fact, it seemed as if both groups were actively fighting to impress her. Ryuga watched intently for the entirety of the first day as the queen bee regaled Akira with her exploits. Ryuga observed no less than five switch-ups in a single conversation. He was convinced that Akira was doing it on purpose to keep the others guessing. Occasionally, as if she could feel his gaze, Akira would steal a glance towards him, always a warm smile on her face as she did so. This, in turn, ignited a fuzzy spark in Ryuga's chest, but unfortunately, this was usually soured by overwhelming malice being directed his way from the other boys, particularly the jocks. Geez, we're only 15, 16? What's with all the drama? Ryuga would think to himself. Still, he couldn't help but feel secretly pleased. Even Tarad seemed annoyed, and he was known for his cool demeanor even when he was harassing others. By day three, it was pretty clear that Akira had absolutely no intention of boxing herself into just one social clique. She would involve herself with Linda during the morning, speak to Ryuga every day before lunch, and occasionally after school, and hang out with both the jocks and the queens after class. And strangely enough, it had become the new norm. This was probably due to the fact that this forced grouping was never actually spoken about. There were no conscious conversations about it, so the subject of choosing was difficult to breach in passing. Perhaps it was simply due to the fact that Akira herself showed absolutely no desire to belong to anyone. In fact, the only person she actively showed interest in was Ryuga. Out of all the people in the class, he was the only one she would take time out of her day to interact with. Their conversations were always short, but meaningful. During their chats, Akira had managed to learn his middle name, his favorite hobby, reading, and that he was an only child. These weren't necessarily closely guarded secrets. Rather, because he kept to himself and often rebuffed anyone who tried to get too close, no one in the class knew much of anything about Ryuga in general. On the third day, while on his way home, Ryuga was followed by Tarad and his group, who waited until he turned the corner to accost him. Hey. Look who it is, Tarad said so emphatically that Ryuga could imagine the sneer on his face. Still, Ryuga paid him no mind and kept walking. Hey, I know you hear me, you little scrub, Tarad said, placing his hand on Ryuga's shoulder, the same hand that was quickly slapped away as Ryuga kept walking. You little shit, watch yourself. Benji, the third man in Tarad's jockstrap squad, screamed as he lunged forward. Benji pushed Ryuga hard into a nearby wall, pressing his face against the cold concrete before flipping him around forcefully. Tarad wants to talk to you. Don't go ignoring him. It takes four people to talk to me? Sounds like Tarad's got a codependency problem, Ryuga retorted. He wasn't exactly sure why he said it in a time like this. It was obvious what was to come. But before the words could be correlated, they were spoken. What the hell did you just say? Benji said as he reared back to punch Ryuga. Stop. I'll handle this. Tarad said, stepping forward as he pushed Benji to the side. Don't get beside yourself just because she makes an effort to talk to you. She's just being nice, you little twerp. If you know it's good for you, you'll keep your hands to yourself. Tarad said with a stern look upon his face. Ryuga didn't respond or even register that he acknowledged Tarad in any way. Instead, he simply stared. Tarad wasn't really sure what he saw in Ryuga's eyes that annoyed him, but there was something about this kid that really agitated him. Just his face. It was like he didn't understand or observe the pecking order. He'd let Ryuga slide, because he thought the boy understood to a degree. But perhaps it was time to teach him a lesson. 
Tarad turned to leave, but it was a feint. Instead, he reared back to catch Ryuga off guard with a swift, powerful punch to the gut. Ryuga was completely unprepared, the blow sinking deep into his abdomen and knocking the air out of him. You little shit. I'll show you exactly where you stand with me. As Ryuga fought to catch his breath, Tarad hit him with a powerful cross, which knocked him first to his knees, then to the ground, face first. Tarad followed this up with several kicks to the abdomen, adding insult to injury as the pain overcame Ryuga so badly that he thought he'd pass out. Don't break anything, just bruise him up really bad, Tarad said as he stepped back and put his hands into his pockets. The other three jockstraps stepped forward and began stomping and kicking Ryuga, who was forced to curl up into fetal position. Several minutes later, Ryuga was barely conscious, his face and arms badly swollen, blood seeping from lacerations and cuts on his hands and arms. Ryuga could scarcely keep his eyes open as he watched the group walk off, leaving him bruised and battered. Soon he could no longer keep his eyes open. His body racked with pain from head to toe as he succumbed to weariness. Usually his mind was a place Ryuga dreaded to descend into, but there, in this time of discomfort, he found solace. He could hear her voice, his mother's voice, and though he couldn't make out her words, he had a feeling she was saying something along the lines of, it will be okay, honey. Ryuga wasn't really sure how long he'd been out, but he remembered waking up with the taste of blood in his mouth. His legs felt decent, much less like jelly now, and though his abdomen was still bruised and battered, he could now find the strength to stand. He grabbed up his belongings and started the long, painful walk home. His eye was swollen from where Tarad struck him initially, and his rib cage ached with each step. Still, more than pain, what Ryuga felt was anger. It flickered within him like a dancing flame, so much so that unbeknownst to Ryuga, his eyes had begun to take on a peculiar countenance, almost lizard-like appearance. It was normally a ten-minute walk from his home to the school, but today it was well over an hour due to the snail's pace Ryuga was forced to keep. Each step was riddled with pain, which shot forth from every part of his body as it moved. The only thing keeping him on his feet at this point was the desire to make it home. Once he had entered his house, he could do little else but fall over at his doorstep. He had expended all of his energy simply getting to the house, but his mind was still racing. Something about the encounter had sent his heart aflutter. It was a different type of emotion, one that he'd never experienced before. Though his body was battered, he felt as if his soul was on fire. Those same classmates, the ones he'd regularly looked down upon for being immature, had ignited him with a sense of being alive, something that Ryuga had given up long ago. At this thought, he turned his head to look up at the picture of his mother, sitting by his front door as always. Her face had carried him through many days, and the memories he held of her were his only solace through dark times. For him, Loneliness was a constant companion. He had already died inside and never quite found a way to live or feel again. In fact, he was only alive now because it was a directive from his mother. She wished for him to live on, no matter what. But Ryuga couldn't deny that his days often felt like staring into a spiraling abyss of darkness. A deep and all-consuming hole that swallowed all hope, all protest, and all will to push on. For him, this reality was much more surreal than the pain which seared through his body. No physical pain could compare to the trauma that had been inflicted on his soul. He placed his hand over his eyes as the tears welled up and began to pour. It had been a while since he'd cried to himself like this. No hope. At least, that's what he thought to himself. Still, he couldn't help but think of Akira's face the second this thought creeped into his mind. Was he fooling himself, as Tarad said? Was Akira really just being nice to him out of pity? Ryuga's life was heavy enough. The real reason he sought to being alone was because he didn't like the weight of the chains others often seek to place upon each other. He struggled with so much, it wasn't worth adding any more weight to an encumbered existence. He finally got to his feet after a good cry, 
and slowly walked towards his bathroom, lost in thought. Should he just ignore her altogether tomorrow? A part of him thought it might be a good idea, but a larger part of him really wanted to deprive Tarot of the pleasure it would bring. A part of him really wanted to blatantly rebuke Tarot by flirting in his face. This was also a feeling he couldn't deny. Deep within, there was a certain degree of defiance which was beginning to churn in his stomach. Either way, he would have at least a day to settle his feelings on the matter. Ryuga finished washing his hands and stared into the mirror, deep in thought. For a moment, he didn't recognize the eyes gazing back, but upon doing a double take, he dismissed it as fatigue. It was only six in the evening, but Ryuga had a long day ahead of him tomorrow. With this in mind, he decided on a simple, instant dinner. Then he said his prayers and retired to his bedroom. A deep sleep overcoming him almost as soon as he closed his eyes.